So uh, what does mainstream science say about uh, the cosmos, its origin, uh, the development of stars and, and solar systems and planets, life itself? What is the, the mainstream uh, scientific conjecture about this whole timeline? Really, it goes back 14 to 17 billion years ago, and this was at the time when we had this Big Bang. This, uh, this uh, all of a sudden, all space, time, matter, energy came from this infinitely dense speck, this singularity, and all of a sudden, just started started to expand uh, for no apparent reason. Um, the chemicals, two chemicals, helium and hydrogen, kind of burst forth, and uh, all these natural laws, physical properties, and for about 10 billion years you started to kind of coagulate through the process of gravity, create stars. Now stars are these just incredible, basically fusion reactors out there that uh, start burning and as these stars start to die, they eject new chemical elements into the cosmos. And this is where we go from our original two chemicals through a process of stellar evolution and now through the ejection of different chemicals off their deaths we now have chemical evolution and this is where we get our 88, 90 naturally uh, occurring chemical elements today. And then you go through a process of another few billion years where you take these newly formed chemical elements and a kind of a process of gravity and you start creating planets. And now all of a sudden you have this coming together of these basically floating rocks and uh, then over a period of a few more billion years, you start this process of kind of raining on these rocks and maybe some volcanic activity, some lightning strikes, etc. And in our, uh, our cosmogony or theory of the origin of all, it was about 600 million years ago where the first life burst forth. This is organic evolution or life from a rock, uh, the so-called little protozoans that were swimming in the primordial seas. And from this organic evolution, or life from a rock, then we had a macroevolutionary process of this one protozoan becoming all kinds of life that we see today, from reptiles and amphibians to birds and mammals to human beings. Okay? And then what we observe today are a process of microevolution that would be the changes within, kind, within the kinds. So why we have everything from a Chihuahua to a Great Dane in the dog kind. Okay, why we have different types of horses, why we have different types of uh, bird beaks on a, a finch, and why human beings look different. We adapt, we change over time within the structure, within the kind that we are. So anyway, there's your process. You have cosmic evolution, to stellar evolution, to chemical evolution, to planetary evolution, to organic evolution, to macroevolution, and ultimately this microevolutionary concept or adaptation within a kind. You know, it's interesting that scientists have only observed the last phase of evolution, these microevolutionary changes, and nobody has a problem with that. We have changes, adaptations within kinds of creatures. But it's crazy how science has extrapolated backwards on all of these other phases of, evol of evolution that had to have occurred. And they say this is science and everything else is philosophical conjecture. Well, th this isn't science. This is also philosophical conjecture because these are theories of origins that we can't duplicate in a laboratory anymore. This isn't scientific method. Indeed, this is philosophical conjecture also based on a naturalistic, materialistic progression uh, over time. Think about it.